What's going on everybody? It's your boy C4 here and today I realized I didn't have a video scheduled for Thursday and it's a good time to be an Eagles fan right now. Lots of hype. We're, we're dominating the headlines be it the fact that we're 2-0 and more importantly we're 2-0 with the rookie quarterback that no one really gave him a shot in Carson Wentz. Um, so I mean everywhere you go be it Facebook, social media, Twitter, YouTube, all those are all social medias but it's just the Carson Wentz hype train is getting going full-fledged and I'm here to a little bit pump the brakes. I mean, I'm a little bit uh, to blame as well. I made a video saying that his tendencies are very similar to Peyton Manning. And then everyone's like, oh, did you just say that Carson Wentz is going to be better than Peyton Manning? Or just, you know, whatever people in the comment section uh, come to conclude. But after hearing all this and being let down so many times before, this is almost, this video here is going to be about the state of the Eagles. As, and I'll just kind of address little things about Carson Wentz. Pump the brakes on Carson Wentz just a little bit. You can be very impressed with what he's done. You can be optimistic about the future and, you know, the, the long-term future as well as the immediate future. I mean, the Eagles right now are a contender in the NFC East. Definitely not a Super Bowl contender, but they're now a contender to make the playoffs. Whereas before the season with Sam Bradford, it was highly questionable that we might be able to win the division. Which I guess is an upside. But pump the brakes, man. Look at Marcus Mariota last year. Through the first two games, Mariota was playing very similar to Carson Wentz. Hell, he even had better stats than Carson Wentz. Then, you know, very similar to Carson Wentz. Mariota didn't protect himself. He ended up getting hurt. And teams and defenses had time to like, all right, here, now he's not fucking playing. We can extra game plan and really find holes in his game to exploit. And then Mariota really hasn't been the same type of player that he has been before his injury as rookie season. He's still a great player promising prospect at quarterback but you know his hot start hasn't really picked up he's had some peaks and valleys like any rookie quarterback he's had some great games has had some bad games we haven't got to that point yet with Carson Wentz but along with pumping the brakes you know his the hits and protection that he's taking he needs to protect himself he took if he took half an hour out of his film study which you could clearly see by the way he controls the line of scrimmage and reads defenses already through two games if he took even just a little bit of that to understand when he has to give up on a play and focus on protecting himself that would be the perfect thing because right now that's the only thing he needs to clean up in this game outside of our wide receivers dropping gimme balls which I think pro football focus who also rate him currently as the top quarterback in the NFL uh, he also has the most dropped yardage and touchdowns I think he says he has like 89 total yards dropped and two touchdowns gone which is the most in the NFL so I mean that's kind of out of his control we just can only hope that they can you know you know stop having bricks for hands the biggest thing for Wentz is his protection. You're going to see a big change in big-time hitters this week. you got Mike Mitchell. you got James uh, Harrison on the P Pittsburgh Steelers. Getting hit by those guys is going to fucking stink. So, you know, make sure that he protects himself is the biggest thing for Carson Wentz I have right now. Because it might not be week 6. It might not be week 12. But it may be week 14, week 15, looking like the Eagles might win the division. And then he goes down because he get popped because he's had so many hits throughout this year. And it finally adds up. And over, over just, it's done. It's over. So make sure he protects himself because I do not want, you know, with Michael Vick and even Donovan McNabb to an extent, we had great quarterbacks, but they were mobile. That's what made them so great. But because they were mobile and they were, you know, almost seems like they refused to protect themselves. They're like, oh, no, I got the flak jacket on. Don't worry. I'll be fucking good. They always, you'd always have not only the fact that they would eventually do get hurt, but you always had the fear like, man, they're going to be great, but hopefully he doesn't get hurt this year. And I don't want that case for Carson Wentz. Um... Other points that, like I said, I don't want to talk too much about it because I've already done a video on it, but they're 2-0 and everyone's going, oh, it's the Bears, oh, it's the Browns. The Bears, okay, or the Browns, all right, but the Bears was a road win in a Monday night game against one of the top defensive coordinators in the NFL in Vic Fangio. Vic Fangio, a guy that was on a lot of head coach shortlists, and I'd say probably top 10 DC in the NFL right now. And maybe not so much the talent that he has to work with on defense, but the fact that Carson Wentz, as inexperienced as he was, and the way he called the game, the way he controlled, like Peyton Manning, controlled the offense, called audibles, the way he read the defense, he outdueled Vic Fangio, one of the top defensive minds in the NFL. And this, going into my next point, is for a guy in Carson Wentz that has played like 35 games at the quarterback position before the Cleveland Brown games. He started one year in high school, and he had, I think they said 22 or 23 games with North Dakota State. So against inferior competition he's been able to come into this league and just look like like so calm so poised and the technical side of being a quarterback where you know you have a guy like Marcus Mariota that's an athlete that can play quarterback so you can clearly see with Carson Wentz we have a quarterback that's also an athlete in the mold of like a Ben Roethlisberger type 
But, I mean, the way he is playing isn't like any rookie quarterback I have seen, ever. I mean, look at a comparison between some of the last rookie quarterbacks. I mean, Jared Goff hasn't played yet. Uh, it's, you know, we're not going to be able to gauge that. But maybe because he hasn't played yet, it really just shows you that Wentz is a better prospect. You got Dak Prescott. I mean, you know, different play types, different systems. Dak has the better offensive line. You know, Zeke Elliott could be considered a better prospect than what we have at running back. Even though to me, he's kind of running like Trent Richardson. And he has Dez Bryant on the outside. When you have a safety blanket like Dez, Dez, as much as I hate him, as much as I think he's a crybaby, he is an elite wide receiver. We don't have anyone as close to the talent of Dez Bryant. And Dak Prescott, you know, still hasn't looked as good as Carson Wentz, in my honest opinion. Then you got Jameis Winston. He's turnover prone. And he still has better weapons than Carson Wentz and is playing a little bit different and not as good, in my opinion. You know, he has Doug Martin, Mike Evans, Vincent Jackson. All those guys could be considered certainly upgrades on our current Eagles offensive line offense. And, you know, Winston still makes him turnover prone. He makes those mental mistakes that we're already seeing through these short two games, this short scope of Carson Wentz, that he's not going to make those. He's not going to make those same decisions because, I mean, definitely the mental side of things for Jameis Winston was one of the things that went against him. Um, then you got Marcus Mariota, who I just said, he's an athlete playing quarterback. You know, he's not going to make the audibles. He's not going to be able to read the game. He's going to make more plays with his feet because he's an elite athlete. You know, Carson Wentz quarterback that can also run that's where i'll take wentz over mariota then you got blake bortles a couple years back similar athlete but also turnover prone much like james winston he had a bunch of interceptions uh even last year he had 30 some touchdowns but he still had a bunch of interceptions that really held him back from being in that elite category and he still i would say have better weapons than uh carson wentz has right now you know alan robinson alan hearns julius thomas then you got Teddy Bridgewater, who's, I mean, let's be honest, he's, he's a game manager. Teddy Bridgewater, I, don't, I think Carson Wentz right now is already better than Teddy Bridgewater. And then finally, Derek Carr, very similar athlete, much like Blake Bortles, and I'd say debatably better weapons. You got Amari Cooper, you got Crabtree. I think, you know, Crabtree's kind of in that Jordan Matthews gray area of ranking wide receivers. Um, but, I mean, even Derek Carr doesn't control the line of scrimmage the way Carson Wentz does, doesn't read the game like Carson Wentz does, and has a lot more experience. Going back to where Carson Wentz only had 35 games, Derek Carr seems like he played eight years at Fresno State, threw the ball a lot against some pretty tough teams. So the level of competition when Derek Carr came into the league and his experience versus Carson Wentz is well in the Derek Carr category, and still Carson Wentz is right in the conversation with all of these quarterbacks in it's, it's simply incredible. So I'm not going to come out and say that he's better than everyone like that, but I kind of am. Still, then we'll go back to the first thing I said, where it's, whoa, whoa, C4, pump the brakes. It's all right to be excited, but let's not go ahead and claim him to be, you know, the next fucking, you know, t Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Ben Roethlisberger. But because of Carson Wentz, the final part of this video that I want to close up with, because what I was really thinking about, is the state of the franchise. Because of this Carson Wentz trade, or not Carson, well, I guess we'll consider it the trade, but now having Carson Wentz on the roster, you know, we got our pitch back. The, the draft's in Philadelphia. This is a great franchise move. Imagine having the draft in Philadelphia and not having a first-round pick. We were going to shit on every pick anyways, regardless we had a first-round pick, but not having a first-round pick, knowing that it's almost like a slap on the face, like they're laughing at us. You know, fuck, uh, we're going to have the draft here, but you don't have to pick. Get ready and wait till day two. Now we got that first round pick, which is good for the city. It's good for the organization. Number two, always relevant. I'm an Eagle fan since probably 2002, 2003, right before they made that good Super Bowl run in 2004. Since I've been a fan, there's only been two years that the Eagles really haven't been relevant. You had that year that Chip Kelly got fired. Uh, and then you also had the year that Andy Reid got fired. Outside of that, the Eagles have always been a team that you knew going into the season that they had a shot to make the playoffs. They had a shot, maybe not to make the Super Bowl, but they had a shot. You know, and you know, the worry was with the Bradford era looming, you know, were we going to fade into irrelevancy? I always want my Eagles to be, you know, a team that can be considered for the playoffs, can be relevant, can be, you know, the division's not where it used to be. But they're fucking relevant. And now with Carson Wentz at the helm, for, they can be relevant for the next decade. And because of Carson Wentz at the helm, going to the next, next point, they can attract free agents. I know, I know, it kind of made the bull claim, should we look at getting an elite playmaker on the outside like Alshon Jeffrey? But, I mean, with the Bradford money that we're saving, it looks like maybe Jason Kelsey can be on the chopping block. There's going to be money there. And does Alshon Jeffrey want to go to, you know, another team that's going to pay him the most money and might not have a good quarterback? Or does he want to go to a bigger market like Philadelphia and go with a future very promising quarterback in Carson Wentz? Things like that can certainly open up where if we still had Bradford at the helm, maybe not. And then lastly, you know, every other team has questions at quarterback. You know, Eli Manning is starting to get on his down. What does he have? Eli Manning probably has three, four years left. 
He's he's been there, done that. Red, Washington Redskins, Kirk Cousins this year look like shit. Dallas Cowboys, Tony Romo era is coming to an end. Dak Prescott still has to answer some questions, similar to Carson Wentz. Like I said, pump the brakes. Only been two games, but you know, just judging from this week, week two of the NFL season, looking forward at the scope of the NFC East, Eagles certainly have the most promising quarterback situation going forward right now, and. Um, like I said, that always goes back to the point where I always want my Philadelphia Eagles, your Philadelphia Eagles, our Philadelphia Eagles to be relevant. And with Carson Wentz, at the very least, he has made this team relevant once again. So that will do it for me here today, guys. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And until next time, it's your boy C4 saying peace out.